Hi, this is Anthony Fosicek with Ohio Daily Blog. I'm here with uh, 8th District Congressional Candidate Justin Kasuli, who has the uh, enormous task of uh, running against uh, uh, Republican leader John Boehner. Justin, welcome. Thanks for having me, Anthony. Good to be here. My pleasure. Uh, you are a former Army captain. Uh, after you left the military, you went and got a law degree at the University of Maryland. Uh, you worked for the city of Baltimore for some time. Uh, you've got business experience as a, a small business owner. You've also worked for a large multinational corporation. And yet you're only 35 years old, and then you take on this task. You're going to run against John Boehner, the man who believes he's going to be Speaker of the House in just a few short days. How did, that be, how did you arrive at that point? Right. Uh, I like to start small, right, Anthony? <laughs> uh, now, uh, you know, I, I think we get the government we deserve, and uh, and my wife and kids and, and me and our neighbors and, and people across the 8th District deserve a lot better than John Boehner. We deserve better than the representation that we've been getting. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's our government, and uh, and it, it's incumbent on us to, to stand up and get involved. And, and that's, you know, it was as simple as that, my decision process, uh, to do this, because I think the only the only guaranteed outcome is that if John Boehner had been unopposed, then he would have been reelected. I mean, that's the only thing we know for sure. So, the first step is to is to get in the fight, and is to take the challenge to him and offer the voters something different, something better, uh, a real choice, which they haven't seen here in 20 years. John Boehner's been in office for 20 years, 10 terms, and uh, really never faced any sort of organized, funded focused opposition in that time. So I think there's a lot of white space in this race. The fact that he has been reelected, uh, I think, is more a factor of that he simply had no opposition than, than, the, than the fact that, uh, that he's, you know, beloved or overwhelmingly supported by people in the district. I think that's a misperception. He's, uh, you know, he's had, like you said, a lot of success in, in very little opposition over the years. So even now with your race, people will look at it and say, well, you know, we've got a great candidate, but, you know, the reality is he doesn't really have a shot. You see it differently. Tell me why. Sure. I, for, for people that like to hear some of the numbers, I, I think they are powerful. The, by registration, this is a district that has 55% uh, independent or unaffiliated, we call them in Ohio, right? The other 45% is, is evenly split, Republican and Democrat. So on the registration, it is a competitive district, or it should be. Uh, you know, and, and then we look at the primary that, that we just went through in May for this election. Boehner had two challengers for the first time ever, and they were self-described moderates. They, weren't, they didn't come at him from the right. They weren't Tea Party guys. And uh, in that closed Republican primary, one out of six Republican primary voters went into the voting booth and cast their vote for someone other than their 20-year incumbent minority leader would-be Speaker John Boehner. So I, I don't even think he's got his base shored up. We've also got two third-party candidates in the race. There's a Libertarian and a Constitution Party candidate that will be on the ballot uh, next week, and I think they add a dynamic. The Tea Party is very active here, and, and while John Boehner's been courting them for the last 18 months, he doesn't have much to show for it. He's not exactly their favorite son. Uh, so, you know, I think on some of the numbers, there's reason to believe. The last thing I would say is a Democrat can compete in this district. Ted Strickland got about 44% in 2006 in this district, and, and Rich Cordray got about 44% in 08. And, and they targeted 38 39%. So they did about five points better. And I use them as examples of funded professional organized campaigns, uh, you know, that did better than they shot for. So the question I like to say is, ask is, just imagine what a Democratic campaign that actually shoots for 51% in this district might be able to accomplish. You know, we might just get there. So for people that like to see some, of, you know, hear some of the numbers and the political science behind it, I think there's reason to believe there's a path to victory. Now, I'm not delusional. I don't think a Democrat can win this seat 80-20, but I do think there's a path to 51%. You know, we don't have a lot of time to lose or a wide margin for error, but with a little help from a lot of people, which has been what this campaign has been about for the last 10 months, I think you can connect the dots and get there. And uh, and that's the first step, I think, to taking on this race and taking on Boehner is you've got to believe. You've got to believe there's a way. Well, you know, everybody always says politics is local. And, you know, I think for a lot of Ohioans and folks nationally, we see John Boehner 
and we don't look at him as a individual congressman representing an individual district. I mean, he's clearly a national leader of the Republican uh, Congressional Caucus. Um, but, you know, he does have a district he has to serve back home, and we don't know much about that district. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the 8th District and, and some of the issues that are really important to voters there? Sure, Anthony. I, I think that's a great question. Uh, you know, first of all, the 8th District is, a, is all or part of six counties. Uh, it is located roughly between Cincinnati and Dayton, sort of the, the space in between two major metropolitan areas. It is it is rural. It is suburban. It is exurban. It is it, it, it's strong in agricultural. It is strong in manufacturing. It's it's a real microcosm of Ohio, and Ohio is a real microcosm of America. So I think it's a it's a tremendously diverse and in, an interesting place. Uh, it, it's overwhelmingly working middle class people, uh, which which people might be surprised to find out, given that that Boehner's been there, the represent the representative here for 20 years. So. The, the district dynamics, I think, also make it a very competitive place. Uh, and, and what I hear from people in the district over the last 10 months, really two issues always come to the top. And it, and it takes people five or 10 minutes to get to talk about health care policy or tax policy when we talk about this race. And it doesn't, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, or independents, the, the, the first two things they talk about, number one is they want an accountable and accessible public servant. You know, they want a voice in the House. And the second thing they talk about is a refocus on the working middle class, you know, job creation, economic development that benefits the middle class. And on both those points, they really see John Boehner as having failed them. And I think that's, that's a fair assessment. So to take that full circle to your first comment about all politics are local, I think that's exactly the reality in this race and where we have an opening and why I believe it's a winnable race because – People here do not talk about, well, you know, John Boehner could be our speaker or we'll hold the majority. Those, those sort of D.C. inside the beltway calculations just aren't what's on voters' minds in the 8th District. They, they want somebody that is an advocate for their interests, that, that listens to their concerns, that understands their aspirations. And some of this is just fundamental. It's just basic about physically being in the district more outreaching to voters, going around and being accessible to them in meetings, answering their questions, talking to them face to face. And we haven't seen that here in decades from John Boehner. And that is the frustration that I hear most often on voters' minds. And again, it crosses political lines. So I think this is an excellent example of a race where all politics is local, and it really is. Outstanding. You've got eight days left uh, in this race. Uh, why don't you give our readers and listeners an uh, opportunity to check you out. If you can give us your website and your phone number where folks can uh, you know, look you up and maybe even throw a few dollars your way. Sure, Anthony. I appreciate it. Uh, like you say, we are, um, at, at this point, we're an all-volunteer operation. We, our, our staff is tremendous, but they're all-volunteer. We have very low overhead. We we operate out of you know our garage and, and home offices and the backs of our cars. So every dollar we raise from here to the end goes to media radio tv we're running it now you know everything we can we can put toward that will be one more uh, you know one more thrust in the fight so our website is kasuliforcongress.com that's a that's a bit much but a, an easier way to get to us might be beatbainer.com so that will take you to our website as well and uh and you can donate there you can learn more about me and the issues and our campaign and what we're doing and it's a great way to to get more informed but yeah, we're we're fighting to the to the very end. We need every day we can muster in this fight, and uh, I'm confident that we've got the momentum uh, on our side. And I'm really really encouraged. Well, congratulations to you first on uh, what appears to be a tremendous uh, effort this year. It's been really refreshing to see a quality candidate run a quality campaign out of that district. I know it doesn't get a lot of attention outside of your district, uh, as it probably should. Um, but, you know, those of us who pay attention to this stuff re really appreciate the job you're doing. And second of all, good luck on Tuesday. The entire country is counting on you. It's all on your back. Uh, <laughs> uh, we no expect nothing less, nothing less than 51%, but um, uh, we know you're doing everything you can, so we're, hopefully we can, we can cover your back and, and help you out every way we can. Well, 
Thank you, Anthony. I sincerely appreciate it. I really do. The, the, the support from people across the district and Ohio and even the country has been tremendous, and it's been the key to this race. Uh, you know, one person can, can't do it. This has been a, a tremendous grassroots effort, so I, I really do. I appreciate your comments and, and all the support we've had. Uh, I know that win, lose, or draw, this is a victory. It's a victory for progressives and Democrats and, and the people, and, and we'll just we'll see what happens next Tuesday. Sounds good. Thank you for joining me today on Ohio Daily. Thank you, Anthony.